Hello everyone! How's it going? Thank you so much for coming today. It's a very busy time of year. We're all for Christmas, New Year's, Bonen Kais every day, <laughs> right? Um, so we're really, really happy that you all made it here and oh my god there's a lot of you that's so scary <laughs> I just sit there and look at my streaming platform then I stand out like whoa <laughs> well, all right what are we here for CC 10 demo day what is that oh that doesn't work all right cool well welcome to CC 10's demo day uh, my name is Felix. I'm the lead instructor at Code Chrysalis, and I won't take much of your time because this is not about me. It's not about Code Chrysalis. This day, this night is all about these lovely people on the side, our students from CC10. Ooh. And while you're here, please share anything you do on social media and tag us. Hashtag CC Demo Day. Or the tweets at Co Chrysalis. Tweet, tweet. Mm -hmm. I also want to give a big thank you again to Rapid 10 Rapid API, with whom we have a collaboration during our course. Um, and you can also find that event on our YouTube in case you missed it. Yay! By the way, this is live streamed. Um, all right, so again, Tonight, why are we here? Not to listen to some random German dude, probably. Um, right now we're doing an introduction. We're doing a terrible job at it. Oh, I'm, I'm peaking the mic too. Wow. I need to do more karaoke. Um, what we're going to focus on are the senior project presentations. That's the final project that um, our students do in the 12 weeks. They have four weeks to do it. Um, then we're going to do some closing words, and then we're all mingling around. By the way, who is here for the very first time at Co Chrysalis? Wow, nice. That's a lot of hands. Welcome. Welcome to the family. We're so happy you're here. All right, let's do another question. Who here is an engineer? Software engineer, engineer, whatever. All the engineers are allowed. We're all inclusive. Awesome. And now, who is looking to hire? Oh, no pressure. No, no pressure, okay. <laughs> Couple people. All right, so, um, without further ado, I promise you I wouldn't take much of your time. I will give it up to our MC of the night, of our Master of Ceremonies, which is Fraser! <laughs> Fraser, I'm from Scotland, if you couldn't tell by the terrible accent that I have, and my job tonight is to introduce the teams, tell you a few stories, and distract you all when someone can't set up their laptop. So, you know, thank you so much for coming here today. It's Christmas, uh, the day after Christmas, the KFC boxes are in the trash, Santa has handed back his ID card, and you have decided instead looking for the cheapest Christmas cake you can on Reduced to come here today. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. is not about you, it's about us, so we're going to get on with our senior projects. Uh, the first team is in language learning app. Now, who, you, which, who here can speak two languages? Three languages? Four languages? Whoa. Five languages? Oh, so hands up. Okay. I think we stopped the five languages. Well, if you, like me, can barely even speak one language, then this team is for you. Lexiverse is going to bring you a way of learning Japanese in the glorious hellfire of combat. Smash those tenses, eviscerate those conjugations, but I can say that Kebo remains the unbeatable final <laughs> boss. Now, we're not quite ready, so I might have to waste some time. Now, you, tell me, you, what is your favorite, <laughs> what is your favorite programming language? Python. Fantastic. What is your favorite programming language now? JavaScript. Fantastic. Yes, it's a JavaScript course here, but over the course we learn a lot of different languages. Uh, I think for this app they've got, how many languages have you guys got on this app? <laughs> like 
Is that right? <laughs> You've got like four different languages in this app. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Right, are we ready to go? We'll find out. Apparently. Fantastic. Right, so <laughs> what happens will happen. And without further ado, let me introduce to you Lexiverse. Okay, so um, we are Team Lexiverse. We built a language learning game that is designed to help students kind of augment their language abilities. Um, and we wanted to really focus on using some sort of entertainment platform to help people learn. So this is how we kind of came up with the idea for it. Um, before we begin, I'm going to introduce the team. So I was the tech lead, my name is Daniel, and I worked uh, to develop Unity and C Sharp, uh, the game in those languages. And I also used a library, JSON.net, that helped us to kind of uh, retrieve information from JavaScript and kind of work between C-Sharp and JavaScript, so. Hello, my name is Nao. Uh, for this project, I was responsible for uh, creating company application using Flutter and Dart. Additional programming was done for the landing page using React. Hi, uh, my name is Yu. Uh, I, I worked on uh, fr uh, front application and uh, backend databases and backend server and uh, CSD by Prime. Hello, my name is Eugene. I work on Unity as well as creating all the flashcards. Okay, so let me introduce our persona. His name is Bob Weeby. He loves to game and he also likes a Japanese pop culture such as manga and anime. He really wants to learn Japanese, but sometimes he struggles to learn and when reviewing his lessons. Uh, as a young student, he has a lot of potentials, but uh, if he struggles to learn, he struggles to focus, he won't be able to reach his goals. Okay, so who knows these two? Anyone? Yes, Yala, who are these? <laughs> Pajama Sam and Carmen San Diego. Excellent. So, um, Pajama Sam and Carmen San Diego are two uh, what we call edutainment icons. So, edutainment is a term for educational uh, entertainment. And these two are used in uh, classrooms quite often to teach students subjects such as geography, history, math, and language arts, among other things. So, the great thing about games is that they give a structure to problem solving. Um, that's something that can be really useful for learning languages. So we really wanted to help students kind of achieve their next goal through kind of practicing language through uh, gaming. So to solve Bob's problem, we created uh, Lexiverse. So we have multiple components to this app. Um, at the core, we have a database. The database contains information uh, for different flashcards that contain uh, language. Um, for example, we have flashcards for um, JLPT N5. And then that is then fed to the game. And we have different game modes that utilize that information to kind of help students review. You'll see a little bit of that later. So the Flashcard Companion app, uh, you can see on the right where it says review, um, it helps students build their own personal deck. These personal decks then allow students to kind of share information with other students who want to learn from them, or they can just review it on their own. And lastly, we have something called a universal deck. This deck is uh, something that everyone can add to and then later on use for, uh, to test the limits of their knowledge. And so pulling from all the community. So um, we're going to give a little bit of a demo of what we have. So that real quick. Okay. Um, so this is our title screen for the game. Um, we did the animations in Unity. There's a lot to learn for us. We had to learn different things like physics. We had to learn uh, how to use C sharp to script things. And we had to learn the basics of the Unity editor. So this is a lot to learn for us, um, but it was really, really fun for us. Um, for the developers on the team. So when you're ready to play, you're going to click play. And yeah, so you'll be brought to this overworld. We kind of have a uh, planet right here. It's for one game mode called Asteroid Blaster. So you can kind of move around this overworld. It's like uh, it will have multiple different game modes. You can kind of move around your ship. And then when you're ready, you can fly to the planet and you're brought to this mode. So this is an Asteroid Blaster mode. Does anyone know what the pronunciation of this is? Yes, good job. So when you're ready, you hit it and an explosion happens. So uh, you increase your score by getting correct things. So for example, if you were to hit something wrong, you wouldn't get a uh, score increase. So what this kind of, uh, we want to give a motivation for students to make sure they can get a high score as possible by getting the most amount right. So that's kind of how we structure the Asteroid Blaster game. Um, for more difficult game modes, you want to add things such as time attack or things that will kind of improvise, uh, allow students to learn 
from more um, more higher stakes. So we're going to go to the game's landing page. So we have a landing page to the game. As you can see here, we have QR code to the game and the flashcards. Later on, we're going to be uh, we're going to give you the landing page QR code so you can kind of get them for yourselves. So if we go down. Um, we also have other game modes, as mentioned earlier. Um, in this case, we have a racing game mode that Eugene will demonstrate. Yeah, so like Daniel mentioned, we have a racing game. So um, from the first game, we saw it rewards accuracy with the score. But for this game, um, as you approach these portals, you'll be prompted with a question. And each portal, portal will have its own answer. If you enter the right portal, you will get a boost accordingly. Yep. Um, which saw. I actually missed this portal, please ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> and then for Ma, you'll see. Yeah. Yep. And with that said, now I'm going to hand it off to now to explain our flashcard campaign now. Okay, so before jumping in our flashcard demo, I'll have a quick introduction about this mobile application. Um, so, for uh, building this application, we, we use Flutter and Dart. So Flutter is a framework written by strictly typed language Dart. Both are developed by Google and uh, both have uh, fancy animation and really beautiful widgets. And recently it's getting popular and popular, so we decided to choose this new technology. Um, this is our home screen. When user choose deck and type, this application goes to our database and pick up JLPT practices. And the database also sent, provides same exercise to the game, which means this companion application works as a supplement for the game. Okay, so uh, let's do demo and practice Japanese together. Okay, so uh, now we have two types of deck. First one is standard, and second one is universe, universal. Standard has only JLPT practices, and universal, uh, user can add their own flashcard to the universal deck. Okay, so we have uh, four types of practices, vocabulary, kanji, hiragana, and katakana. Okay, so uh, this time let's choose standard deck and vocabulary. Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay. What does it mean in English? Yay. Okay. okay, awesome. So let's do next. How about this? Dochira, dochi. Which way? Which way? Okay, <laughs> great, thank you. Uh, so let's go back to home and this time try kanji exercise. Okay, what does it mean? Experience. What about this? Rain. 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 Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go back to our home and this time let's add our own flashcard. We have question and answer section. Uh, so now uh, let's try my favorite color, Ao, and this is kanji, and which means blue. It should be inside kanji deck. And review everything correct. Oh, blue kanji, okay. Add card, successfully add it. So let's make it sure if it is stored properly inside Universal Deck. And it should be inside kanji. All right, there we go. We have our own flashcard. Okay, so now uh, this application looks uh, pretty simple, but Flutter has a lot of beautiful uh, animation and widgets, so adding those five is our next step. Alpha Studio. Uh, next, uh, I'm going to talk about our deployment role. Uh, for backend express server, uh, we used our uh, AWS services uh, for CICD. Uh, so whole process is managed by AWS code pipeline, uh, which is integrated with uh, GitHub repository. So, uh, so every time uh, uh, our release branch is updated, uh, code builds, AWS code build builds a Docker image and push the image to uh, AWS ECR. And uh, update is just as definition. 
And for front application, uh, we used uh, Cosmonic as a CI/CD pipeline, which is also integrated with uh, GitHub repository. So uh, every time a release branch is updated, uh, Cosmonic uh, built bundle file and published it to Google Play. Thank you. Now I want to talk a little about the Flash class. <coughs> so right now, um, our decks only have JLPT and 5 For those who are unfamiliar with the JLPT, um, the JLPT is the um, most widely recognized standardization of Japanese proficiency. And uh, for future iterations, we'd like to include higher levels of the JLPT to accommodate for more intermediate and advanced learners. But also in addition to that, I want to talk about the flashcard object itself. So how the object is, uh, how it was created, the key value pairs, uh, there's a lot of sections such as type to identify the Shiragana, Dr. Kana Kanji, as well as a flag to identify if the question is asking um, in your target language and expecting an answer in your native language and vice versa. So having the objects laid out like this makes it very easy to query and very easy to manipulate within the game. And so like I mentioned, we would like to add more lessons, but as you saw from our demo, our games aren't exclusive to anything specific with um, the Japanese language. So it makes a great boilerplate for any other sort of uh, foreign language that you would like to learn, and it would be much, it would be quite easy to add in future iterations. Okay, so you can use this QR code to go to the landing page, um, and once again, after the um, all the uh, demonstrations, you'll be able to demo our app. So please come and give it a try if you're with there. Uh, okay, so uh, once again, my name is Daniel. My name is Now. My name is You. My name is Eugene. And thank you guys again for coming to see our um, demo. So um, please try it out and let us know what you think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much to Lexerx. Come again, come on, come on. Leave it there. So, I really like this stuff, you know. It kind of allows me to satisfy immeasurable millennial drive for constant self-improvement due to a fear of missing out, with my other desire to waste all of my time playing video games. Great app, 5 out of 5, fantastic. So, our next team, well, while they're getting set up, I'm going to waste some time. Okay, okay, Minnie, what's your favorite programming language? Oh no, um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, fantastic. What's your favorite pro programming language? Either? I'd say it's a tie between Go and JavaScript. Ah, the complicated answer. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Go, the Golang Gang. Who's in the Golang Gang? Fantastic. And Yukio, what's your favorite programming language? Rust. Do you like Rust? <laughs> That's so cute. Uh, who, who's heard of Rust? Who likes Rust? Fantastic. It was the most desired language of the 2019 Stack Exchange uh, developer survey. Except we had to learn it. Uh, when we were learning languages in one week, we had to learn the language and implement an entire project all in one week. I personally learned uh, Golang um, and Yukio, you learned Rust, right? Yeah. How was the development experience of learning a language in a single week for oh, Rust? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's very challenging, especially for a low-level language like that. And I think uh, I, I, you know, I'm very impressed with Yukio being able to manage that. Uh, Golang it was you know, an interesting challenge, and I think we all uh, challenged ourselves in many, many ways over this course. Right, are we ready, Simi? Fantastic. Yes. Well, there's only one way to introduce Simi. At the start and end of every day, you would hear a chant emanating from across the school, I guess. <laughs> so I would like you to join me in this chant to welcome Simi. It's very simple. All you have to do is repeat after me. So let's get hype. 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 Simi. Woo. My name is Steffi Harner, and today I am proud to present to you Simi, Send Your Message Interface. It is a gamified platform that promotes positive feedback and company morale, cultivating a culture of transparency between leaders and employees, their bottom line. But before we get into this, I just want to introduce to you our lovely development team. We've got Minnie here as our fearless tech lead and front-end specialist. Over there to your right, Igor, our enthusiastic full-stack and infrastructure guru. Next to him, Yukio, our back-end and database master. And once again, my name is Steffi, and I worked on UX UI design and front-end for Simi. And now, I just want to ask the members of the audience, is anyone
anyone here in a position of leadership or has founded a company before? Okay, okay, we got a few people here. So I think you all might be able to relate to Richard. <laughs> he is a budding entrepreneur with the next million dollar idea. Richard here, he's got a working business model. He's got investors and funding, fantastic. Now he can hire staff and support. All right, as time goes on, the workload keeps piling up. Richard hires more and more and more. But the sad reality is, even the greatest of leaders start to lose touch and oversight to their workforce. Staff lose sight of their mission. They start to feel unimportant. They start to get frustrated. And unhappy employees lead to low company morale which leads to decreased productivity. And sometimes, bosses or HR cannot solve these problems or are even the source of the issue. <coughs> the disengaged, unhappy employee is the silent killer of companies. But, that's where Simi comes in. Hi, I'm Mini, and I'm going to introduce Simi to you. So, what is Simi anyway? Simi is a mobile-friendly CEO employee engagement platform. Employees get rewarded when they submit feedback. And they also get rewarded when they submit feedback about other employees, and we give them points for that because we want them to use our platform. And CEOs can get a top-level overview of these authentic feedbacks. And by this, employees are feeling empowered and valued because CEOs can invite them for lunch, for example. And uh, they personally connect with their CEOs and leaders, and this is very essential, especially in the rapidly scaling startup. So next, I'm going to show you the demo of the CME. So first, I'm going to log in as an employee, and we have a JWT authentication for this. So first thing I see is a submit feedback. And this is uh, the image of the employee that we use only for the demo, only for you guys. Okay, so um, I also see for what I get points, so submitting feedback and receiving positive feedbacks. And oh wow, where's the, what's this? Oh, if I, if I get 500 points, then I will get Starbucks gift card, that's cool. And this is actually um, adding employees, adding like quarterly price information is done by the admin. There's an admin view as well, but we don't show it today, limited time, sorry guys. So if we scroll a bit uh, down, we can see feedback history. And you can see that they have status, which is seen for now. So these feedbacks are used to uh, generate some charts for the CEO dashboard, which we will show later. And whenever CEO reads the keyword that were provided by your feedback, uh, the status will change to seen. Okay, let's try and add some feedback. For example, I want to praise Steffi here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, and this is fuzzy search working and giving me names. Okay, Steffi, I want to praise her because I think she's an awesome UI UX engineer. Okay. Submit. Moment of truth. Yay, I got 25 points. Nice, I feel good about myself. Yeah. Oh, Steffi has also got Slack notification. Yeah, we have Slack integration. So whenever someone praises you and you get points for that, you get a Slack notification as well. And then go back. So actually, if we go to the points, we can see the details for what did I get the points. And if we click on the details button, oh yeah, okay, I press Steffi, that's why I get points, nice. So if we go to the news section, uh, this is also added by the admin, and this is what's happening in your company, because you wanna know what's happening. And if we scroll to the bottom, <coughs> there is, oh wow, CC10 epic graduation, I should check it out. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. If we click submit feedback, Oh wow, I even don't need to input that by myself, nice. <laughs> okay, so this is basically what employee does and can do. So let's look in as Richard, as a CEO. Okay, so the first thing Richard see is chart, chart, charts. So there is overall sentiment, there is sentiment by department and by category as well. So what is this? This is, da uh, this is data that was provided by the feedbacks that employee submitted. And first, if we go to the overall sentiment, for example, we see how many, like the percentage of people that happy about something sad or mad. And we, if, for example, I want to know what they're happy about. And if I click, I get all the keywords. Okay, they're really happy about new angle and animation project. Okay, I didn't know that's happening. Okay, cool. So then, uh, I also 
see my top rated employees and top number one is Yuki Ueda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that means people like him and he is actively engaged into using our platform. So let's see who is he. Oh, he's handsome. Okay. <laughs> and what others say is about Yukio. He's a backend master. Cool. I want to invite him to lunch, you know, to know him better. Maybe he can teach me some backend stuff. And um, let's grab a lunch. And I want to invite him tomorrow. Yeah. And then send. Yeah, I want to confirm. Cool. Now if I go to the invites, ah yes, I can see the invitation that I sent, and you can see the status is pending, you can actually can log in and either accept, which I really hope you would, or decline the invitation because we are humans, you know. And uh, actually if we go to the news, well, CEO also can read the news. So yeah, and you can see there is about uh, in the employee and uh, the CEO, this is about us about uh, the, if you want to test Simi, this is actually also in our reports too, so don't worry. So yeah, this is what I see. And I will also tell you about the front-end technologies that we use. We use Next.js framework because it gives this PHP-like experience pages. Because as I mentioned before, we have three views. It's employee, it's CEO, and it's also admin. And it's really hard to <laughs> do that without Next.js. So we also use Material UI to style our application. We use uh, Recharts for data visualization. And we use Draft and Rapid API uh, to get the keywords analysis from the feedbacks. And we deployed it on Heroku. We have Circle CI run test on backend and the front end. Uh, I'm Igor, and I'm going to talk a little bit about our backend. And uh, the main thing that you probably need to know is that our backend is actually written in Golang, and we use Jin as a framework uh, to help with the routing. Uh, we're also using Docker to create a, an image of our backend, and we're deploying it using AWS. And uh, more specifically, we are using AWS CloudFormation to create all the required infrastructure. Uh, like again, in details, uh, it creates our AWS code pipeline. And what this means is that whenever really awesome developers push <laughs> make a new PR, code, PR request uh, and it gets merged into master, it goes through the pipeline and again using AWS CloudFormation and uh, ECS Fargate, we just prepare all the infrastructure that is required to uh, actually run our Docker containers. And this is where <coughs> our front-end API calls come in. Uh, take this graph with a grain of salt because it's this is, to be honest, like an oversimplification. So like, if you want to know more, feel free to ask us. And uh, in general, uh, when we set out to write our backend, we set, uh, created like two main goals for us. The first one was to keep our frontend as fast and as uh, reactive as possible. And that is why we decided to write it in Go. Because we will be dealing with a lot of data and Go compiles to binary, which makes uh, processing data and memory a lot faster compared to interpreted languages. And uh, another point is that because we are <coughs> creating um, like an app that's potentially will be used by companies, meaning many employees, uh, there could be a lot of interactions with the database. So we wanted to speed up those interactions as, as fast as uh, as much as possible as well. That is why we decided to write raw SQL queries as opposed to using some ORM. And the second uh, point uh, goal that we decided for ourselves was to make our backend as customizable as possible. As you will see, like our front-end logic is quite complex and to be able to support that complexity on our backend as well, we needed to make it very easily editable. And for that, we implemented a clean architecture. More specifically, we implemented the so-called onion architecture. And just like the vegetable itself, I gotta be honest, it made me cry a couple of nights when I was trying to unwrap it and understand it. Yeah. But again, uh, this topic can probably take a whole lecture just by itself. So if you have any questions about how we implement it or what this is in general, please find us at the networking session afterwards. We'll answer all your questions to the best of our knowledge. And um, like, another point of like supporting that complexity both on the front end and the back end was that uh, we created a RESTful API that had a lot of endpoints, so we needed to make sure that both the front end and the back end can easily communicate what is available, 
uh, what requests are required, what type, of, what kind of response do we send in this case. Uh, so we kept track of e every single point that was ever created and like all the requirements for it, which uh, made uh, the collaboration and integration of front end and back end very easy to do. Okay, I'm going to be talking about front end challenges. So first is user experience. <coughs> we wanted our application to be responsive. On mobile, on mobile devices, iPad, it doesn't matter what you're using. So we used a kind of combined material UI and uh, CSS grid, and we, but we had to customize the material UI as well, because by default it just looks like Google. And we don't want that. And the second point was user complexity. As I mentioned before, we had three types of use, admin, employee, and the leader. And uh, the state management, and especially we had prop streaming problems. We were thinking about, okay, we should use Redux because we know that, but we decided to use Context API, and I'll try to explain why. Well, first and uh, the <coughs> most essential, Context API is built into React. So we don't need any external third-party dependencies, which means a faster, a sm smaller bundle and a better um, project maintainability. And uh, the second reason, well, <laughs> it uh, solves our cross props drilling problem very easily, no need to write additional redundant code, and the API is actually pretty straightforward. And the data flow. So um, I will show you, we will show you the chart. This is uh, for only one action. If an uh, employee submits feedback about another employee, as you can see, it's pretty complex. It uh, includes UX and a data flow, and uh, it affects a lot. So all three of the views. So it took us a lot of time to sit and decide what's going to be. And yeah, this was pretty challenging. Hi, I'm Yukio. I'd like to talk about Future Feature. As a GameFi platform for employees, it is better to earn points easily. So we will add four functions. So to, uh, it is not only for employees, but also, CEO can gather their employees' opinion easily. And also, we will add assignment functionality. Uh, with this functionality, we can uh, CEO can add assignments for their administrators. For example, it forces their administrators to buy some team time or to buy uh, sorry. <laughs> or to solve the problems related to the feedbacks. And also, we have invitation function, so to make it easier, we will uh, add Google Calendar integration. And also, we will add custom Slack notifications for invitation functions. It is not only not notice the new invitation, but also uh, reply. You can reply directly. Uh -huh. uh, so, if there's anything we'd like you to take away from this, is that uh, if you're a leader who cares about his company and his employees, you have Simi. If you are an employee who wants to have his voice heard in the company, you have Simi. And for all other engineering needs, we have got you covered. <laughs> Once again, we are... Mini, Steffi, Yukio, and Igor. Uh, thank you very much. You can um, scan this QR code, or you can just go directly to simi.dev to test it out. Uh, as Mini mentioned, all the required information to log in and test different features is in the readme and in the about. And thank you very much for your attention. Well, the next team comes up. I mean, I think this is a great product, uh, you know, giving feedback about employees. I've always wanted to give uh, somebody on my team feedback about their performance as tech lead, but I, I can never have an anonymous platform to do it. Oh, well, you know, what a shame. So, uh, fantastic. Let's waste some more time. Okay, well, let me tell you a little story. So, we've had a very driven cohort. Uh, people are learning all sorts of skills outside of coding as well, inspired by Derek, 
a lot of people learned to juggle and play hacky sack as well. You might have heard people cheering at the end for some crazy hacky sack goal that they'd set themselves. Um, you know, some, uh, all of the Japanese students have been improving their English now, had a, a goal of tweeting an English phrase every single day. You know, great job. Um, you know, some have learned Rubik's Cubes, uh, break dancing was learned from Eugene, Chinese was learned from CU, uh, ukulele was learned, it's been fantastic. Whereas for me, uh, I was inspired by Potato to learn to sit still for 10 seconds. Fantastic. <laughs> potato being uh, Jan's cute little uh, French bulldog, you will see him at the back there somewhere, you can play with him later. Fantastic. Okay, so Dokuriku is ready. So. Let me introduce Dokuriku. They are like Tinder for traveling. Swipe left on your boring family holidays and swipe right on fantastic new experiences, learning, going abroad with a wonderful new people and having arguments about budget in a sleek in-app messaging system. So, without further ado, let me welcome Dokuriku. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I am very excited to to you, Dokuiku, the social travel planning app. But before I introduce the application, I want to introduce this lovely team of full stack engineers. So my name is Diallo, I was the tech lead for this project, and one of the components I worked on was the profile section. My name is Baru, and one of the things I've done was the collaborative features. My name is Nate, and one of the features I worked on was the maps. My name is Naoto, one of the components I worked on is review section. Hi, my name is Siyu. One of the components I worked on was the chat board. So let me show you and uh, tell you how it all started. So when we decided about the subject of our uh, thesis project, uh, we noticed that we all like traveling and that we all want to be social. But we just moved to Tokyo and some of us just moved to Japan. So we don't know where to go. And also we don't know, uh, we don't have anyone to go with. Uh, so that created a problem that we actually wanted to solve, which is uh, finding new people and uh, that you don't know and go for a trip with them. But as we started uh, to plan, we noticed that people are different. Some people like a uh, busy city and all the cultural things uh, that it has to offer, where others want to relax, go where uh, more they can. And uh, on the other part of the scale is uh, people who just want to escape all the civilization and connect to nature. Uh, as we started developing our app, we also noticed that some of us like planning uh, and they can plan uh, for a week a trip that takes five minutes, whereas some of us don't like planning at all. So this is where we end up with. Uh, if uh, you can go to our app, you can find a trip, or if you don't want to, you can create your own trip. You can find your teammates, uh, you can pack, pack your bags and create really solid friendships. And now uh, I'll pass over to Nate and Diallo and they will show you how it works in practice. Okay, let's get started with the demo for the app. So when you open up the app, it will show an about page with our GitHub links down below. Um, to access any of the features, first you have to log in. So you can log in with either Google or Facebook. Uh, let's try Google first. Downloads and if you go to search trips, you'll find trips that other users have created. Um, you can you can go through many of them and you can join whichever one you want by sending a request to the trip leader. But let's say you don't want to join any of these trips. Let's say you want to build your own trip. Diallo can go to build trip, where you can build your own trip. So first, you need a name for the trip. Um, Diallo will name his trip. Kansai trip, yes. Um, since we're in Japan, he'll choose Japan as our country. Um, you can choose when the trip will start and end, so we could do it this weekend. And, so, and since we're currently in Tokyo, these are round trips, so it'll start and end in Tokyo. And destinations are places that you will visit along the way, so since we're going to Kansai, we go to Kyoto and Osaka. And then since you chose, the, since Diallo chose Japan as the country, um, you will get a budget in Japanese yen. It depends, the currency depends on which country you choose. So Diallo can pick 100,000 yen or so as his budget. And then when he's ready, he can submit the trip to the, to the, to the app. 
And once he's done that, um, Ziyu is also interested in joining the trip. So while we wait for him to send a request to join, let's have Dial look at um, his own profile. So Dial's own profile, it has his reviews. Um, you can upload a link to your social media. Um, you can have a description of yourself and your default currency. Now let's look at his, his own upcoming trips. Oh wait a second, Dial has a notification. I wonder what it is. Um, oh, he has a request from Ziyu to join his Kansai trip. Should he accept them? Well, Dial will take a look to see if he's worthy. So, <laughs> Ziyu, so when you open up his profile, it'll show a mini profile with his reviews and his social media. As you can see, Ziyu mostly has good reviews. So I think, I think he can join. I think Dial is okay with it. Yes, he accepts. Um, next, let's look at a trip that Dial has planned a little more in detail. Here we have a Lake Biwa trip that will happen in next week. Um, it shows the trip information, including the date, the locations that will be visited. And if you hover over the budget, it will show a, a currency conversion with, with, the pro, with the currency that you set in the profile. Um, so first, let's look at the message board for this trip. As you can see here, we have a pretty lively chat um, with, with messages court, where you can coordinate with members in real time without relying on other social media platforms. So first, let's have Dial a message. He's asking if anyone has been to Ulsa before, and then Ziyu will respond to that. And Ziyu said he has. So right when he responded, it shows up in real time. So the messages were built in, in FireChat, which, um, which is a part of Firebase. And let's, next, let's look at Notes. So Notes is a, a little more of a detailed, um, it's a detailed way to coordinate and plan your own trips. You can, you can put places you want my visit. You can, put, you can upload photos. And just like the messages, these are also in real time. So let's have <coughs> Dial and Ziyu write in the notes. <coughs> yes, they're writing about what to bring to the trip. And last but not least, you can also check the, the profiles of every member on, who's going on the trip. And if you're a member, you can, of course, update the trip or if you're the trip owner, you can delete the trip as well. Last but not least, let's look at Diallo's past trips. So, so here we have a trip that happened in the past, and Diel, this is where you can write reviews for your fellow members of the trip. So Diallo can will write a review for this specific one. Oh, here we have a review for me. Oh. Oh, he gave me five stars, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and once he does that, that review will appear on my profile so that anyone can see it to make sure that I'm, I'm worthy. Um, <laughs> and yes, that, is, that, that, that concludes our tour of our app. Okay, I introduced technologies we used. Uh, <coughs> we use Google Cloud Platform and Firebase as our infrastructure. Our front-end app is deployed to Google App Engine, and our application is uh, connected with several Firebase services. For example, Firebase authentication is used for uh, user authentication, and also real-time database and Cloud Fire Store is used for uh, database to store any data for our app. As a front-end, we use TypeScript, React, Redux, and Material UI. And we used Firepad to implement the real-time uh, real nodes. As a backend, we used the Google App Maps API to manipulate maps. And Currency Exchange API is used for the calculating the local current 
currency for each user. As an infrastructure, we use Google Cloud Platform and several Firebase services. And also, we prepare the several features to improve development experience. One is staging production environment we prepare uh, to uh, reduce the risk which our uh, application is accidentally bro broken on production. Next one is deployment pipeline. Uh, after pull requests merged, trigger cloud view service and automatically build and deploy our application to Google App Engine. The third one is Slack notification. After pull request merged or build and deploy are done, the trigger cloud functions and send messages to on Slack. Uh, so each member uh, will check the this status on Slack like this. The last one is database backup. Every 3 a.m. our database is uh, backed up on the cloud storage. So this is the whole uh, architecture and infrastructure on our system. The, by, by using these features, we constructed a robust system on GCP. Next, I'm going to talk about some of the goals we had in creating this application, some of the challenges we faced, and some of the lessons we learned as a result. One of our big goals for this application was to push ourselves to use new technologies. Uh, like Naoto mentioned, the main language for this app was TypeScript, which is a language that none of us have used prior to this project. And there was a bit of a learning curve involved at first. Uh, in particular, one challenge was learning how to integrate TypeScript with some of the technologies we were already familiar with, like React and Redux. So this took some getting used to, but ultimately, it was a positive learning experience. Next was that we knew that we wanted to create a single page application. And we knew that we were going to have a lot of information and moving parts. So in order to manage the state of our application, we used Redux. Uh, as the application expanded and as the features grew, the state ended up larger than we initially anticipated. But fortunately, because we were using Redux, we were able to keep it under control. Next was making sure that we had a nice designed application that, had an that was aesthetically pleasing. To accomplish this, we used Material UI, which reduced some of the hassle that we might have faced if we were just using CSS alone. And last but not least, uh, one of the big challenges that we did was working full stack. We wanted to make sure that for this application, everyone had a little bit of experience working on everything. Uh, one downside of this was sometimes we had multiple people working on the same component, which could lead to some merge conflicts. But fortunately, we identified this issue early on in the process, which allowed us to re-examine our workflow. Uh, so this ended up leading to more information sharing within the team, and then also encouraged us to be better about writing comments and be more proactive about doing documentation. And here are some of the future features we want to add to our app. First, we want to have more transit options. Right now, we assume that all trips are of the same travel mode which is driving. In the future, we want to allow users to select their own travel mode. Second, we want to have direct messaging and friend request system so that users can uh, communicate and so socialize with each other outside of the trip. Third, we want to add calendar integration. Uh, this way, users can plan out their trips in more details. And last but not least, we want to have more mobile functionalities, such as um, better adaptability to different screen sizes, so that our app will be more uh, mobile friendly. Thank you once again for joining us tonight. Once again, we are Team Dogui Group. My name is Diallo. My name is Baru. My name is Nate. My name is Naoto. And my name is Siyu. If you would like to learn more about us, our GitHub handles are on this slide right here. Also, Dokuiku is ready and waiting for you to use it, so please give this QR code a scan and start planning your trips. We would love to hear your thoughts on the application. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to talk to us during the networking event. Thank you so much. I'll tell you a little story, and you might have seen many of us sporting this absolutely lovely t-shirt designed by Vic here. Um, now, if your kanji is a lot better than mine, you'll be able to read that it says cat snake. Now, cat snake, you might see little pictures of the cat snake sitting around uh, 
the school, but uh, the way it comes from is uh, something called Code Chrysalis Karaoke, which is uh, a challenge that the, the instructors set us where we have to present a random series of slides, and uh, us as students get to build those random sets of slides, and somebody thought it would be a great idea to find the most random image you could possibly find on the internet, and somebody... Somebody on the internet has decided that photoshopping a head onto a cat and a snake is worth putting on a stock photo website. Crazy, right? People pay money for this stuff. But yes, so uh, the cat snake then was born into Code Chrysalis 10 Legend, and uh, we very, thank you very much to Vic for build, uh, making the t-shirts. It's been good fun, and we really enjoy getting to know each other as a group and having our little inside jokes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so we really saved the best team for last. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yes, my team, Hula. This is where effort is the currency. Have you ever been using, uh, wanting to learn things online and you just lack motivation? Well, why don't you turn that self-pressure into societal pressure and, and have other people invest in you to force you to study through motivation? So, without further ado, please welcome my group, Hula. All right, thank you everyone for coming today. I really appreciate you coming all the way over here in the holiday season. Um, so as Fraser mentioned, our app's name is QLab, and this is actually the, the homepage for it. Um, but before we get into the application itself, I want to start with kind of a quick uh, introduction of all the team members, starting with Vic. Hello, my name is Vic, and I was the tech lead for this project. Um, and we all worked across the stack for this uh, application, but my main focus was the design of the app and the user experience and user interface. Yep, my name is Derek. Uh, I was focused on the front end, and I was working mainly on developing the component and profile features. Hi, I'm Eriko. I'm focused on front end and implementing history component and interactive with backend. Hello, my name is Fraser, uh, and I'm mainly focused on the back end and development operations and tooling for this project. <coughs> Great, so let's start with the question of what QLab actually is. Um, putting it shortly, it is a quiz app where you can invest in your friends. Um, so there's a lot of different types of learning applications out there, but we wanted to create something with a little bit of a twist. Um, so after talking a lot, we came up with the idea of being able to invest in other people. So you can learn on your own, and you can learn with different things and be rewarded for that, but we wanted to create a small little economy where you can invest in other people, and depending on how much they learn, you're actually rewarded for that and are able to get some points through that. Um, yeah, so we had a few different motivations with that. Um, the first one was that we like quizzes. We think quizzing, quizzes are a good way of learning, and we wanted to figure out how we can do more of that. Um, so with learning more, we saw that there's a lot of different applications out there where you can learn maybe one thing, like you can learn a language, or you can learn different types of skills, but it's usually kind of uh, limited in what you can learn. Um, so we wanted to create an application where you can learn about all sorts of different things um, while also you know, gaining points and kind of getting that motivation like you would from a normal learning application. Um, and then our last motivation was that we really wanted to value consistency and effort over something like accuracy. So we don't want to just encourage people to know the answer already and just always be correct. We want to encourage people that, hey, it's about learning, it's about putting the effort in to actually do something, and that's what we want to actually reward. Um, yeah, so when we had these motivations, we set some goals for ourselves when creating the application, um, and each one of us will go through one of those, starting with Frazier. So we wanted to learn anything through the Socratic method. The Socratic method is instead of large walls of text, books, or long video lectures, you simply learn by answering questions. What is the largest planet in the solar system? Well, there's maybe four or five answers. You, you take a guess, you take a punt, and through that, uh, trying the question over and over again, you learn the answer. And we want to make a community and encourage our friends using investing systems. We also want people to think critically about the way you learn, so we want to show people how their learning is being affected over time, and also show how their own learning is affecting other people. We also want people to just have fun uh, completing quizzes and making strategic decisions that pay off in the future. So these are our core features. Uh, we have a currency called Q points, and stands for quiz points. And we have an effort metric called E score, which stands for effort score. So your Q points, are your rewards in QLab. And you get Q points for completing quizzes, and the harder the quizzes are, uh, the more Q points you can get. With your Q points, you can buy cool badges, <coughs> and you can top the rankings in the leaderboard. We also have the eScore, which measures your effort in the app. Um, you can keep your eScore high by completing quizzes every day. 
But why do we measure effort in the first place? So as we said, we want this to be a collaborative experience. So we have set up an investment system where you can hold your friends accountable for their learning. So for example, I want to invest in my friend Pablito. Pablito has a good e-score. And every day Pablito's high e-score can earn you good coupons. So Pablito is also motivated by your trust in him. We've all been there when we learn a new thing, when we go to the gym. Uh, if someone holds us accountable, it's very powerful for our motivation. So in QLab, it's not just you, it's you and your friends. So here's a quick demo of the app. This is our landing page, and as you can see, we have a very cool 3D logo. Um, we can also sign in with our Google account. Cool, so we are here at the dashboard, and I can see my cue points over here, and I can also see my e-score. And I can see how my e-score is changing over time. This is calculated every day. I can also see the investments that I have made. So I recently made an investment in Erico because she's been using the app a lot. And someone has invested in me, and that's Derek. Thank you. <laughs> okay, but this is a quiz app, so let's go ahead and do a quiz. So here's our quizzes page. We can see all of the quizzes that we have. And we prepared a special quiz for this, for this demonstration. So let's do it. the Quizatron. It's a mixed knowledge quiz. So if the audience will help me, what does the T in T-Rex stand for? Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus? Okay, let's check. <laughs> oh, no, that's wrong. Okay. No problem. An extremely rarely seen marine Pokemon. Its intelligence is said to match that of humans. Right? Right? <laughs> Thank you, Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> Which of these is not a programming language? C flat. C flat. <laughs> what are the names of Mars's moons? Phobos and Deimos. Oh wow! Wow! wow. <laughs> Very <laughs> good. Nice job. We've done this quiz so many times. <laughs> How many Derricks do I need in my life? No. <laughs> and the correct answer, I think it's no. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Okay, it came back. What does the T and T-Rex stand for, everyone? One, two. Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus, that's right. Good job. So we have earned 50 Q points, and we can also rate the quiz. So I love, I love this quiz. I will give it five, five points. Okay, I can see that my Q points have been updated. And so let's go and spend my Q points on something. So this is a store, and you have all of these cool badges. <laughs> Um, I think I'll buy the Phantom Pizza batch because I designed it, so I love it. <laughs> okay, cool. I have something new on my profile. If I go over there, I can see my badges have been updated. And I also have some achievements. So I have been at the top of the leaderboard. I have gotten a thousand points at one point, and I've also been at the bottom of the leaderboard. So I've been at the top and at the bottom. Okay, so here is the leaderboard, and I can see that, oh, there it is doing pretty well. Okay. So in the leaderboard is where I can make my investments. So if I see Derek's e-score is quite high, so I'll, yeah, I want to motivate Derek and invest in him. Cool. You're a bit expensive though. It's worth it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So if I go to my stats page, I can see that I have made an investment in Derek. And as we said, um, this investment and the returns of this investment are calculated every day. So I'll hand it up to Fraser to explain. Yeah, so the e-score, every midnight, e-score is recalculated on the basis of how many quizzes you did the previous day. So it will go down if you did less than three, and it will go up if you did more than three, uh, as, and kind of diminishing returns as you do more and more. Because we want to encourage you to not just do one quiz and leave it, you know, encourage you to kind of be consistent with your effort. So uh, I'm going to run the midnight job right now, called Dexy's Midnight Runner, because that is hilarious. Okay, so it's a little cron job, it's going to go through the entire database, calculate the e-score, calculate the investment payouts, and <coughs> all will be done back now, it doesn't take too long. Okay, fantastic. So, uh, Vic has logged log back in in a new day, and he sees at the top right hand corner that he has now got 150 points from his investments today, and you can see from Derek we got 73 Q, score, Q points, and uh, from Erika we got 77, you can see his Q score his e-score has changed, so it's now gone from 30 to 35, because he's a good boy and he's done lots of studying today. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that is the, generally how the back-end investment system works. Cool. So we also have an about page uh, where you can get a refresher if you want to learn about the infrastructure. And also, um, we have a transactions page where you can see your investments, 
uh, the history of your investments, the history of your purchases, and the history of the quizzes that you've taken, and how much, how many points have you earned. Cool. So that's it for the demo, and I'll hand it back to Fraser to talk about our technology. Yeah, so this is, in general, it's a Firebase app. Uh, so on Firebase, we are, you can talk directly to the database, so you don't need so much of a server, but we are using Google Cloud Functions in order to run those uh, midnight jobs, as well as do a bunch of other little backend things, which I will get into in a minute. And those functions are all written in TypeScript. On the front end, we're using a React Redux stack, uh, with a lot of material UI components, but we've done a lot of our own styling on top of it, which was an interesting challenge. And then we've used FreeJS to do the fun logo, and it's something that we, we, we would use more around the app to do 3D modeling and stuff like that. Okay, and then on the back end, uh, with, De with DevOps, we're using CircleCI to do the automated testing, and then the dev and prod versions of the app, so publishing it into the right place. And we're also using the rest of the Google Cloud uh, you know, shell scripts in order to do things like uh, database migrations <coughs> and all the other little great things that the console gives you. In terms of extras, we used Notion for project management and documentation, and uh, we used the Adobe Photoshop tools in order to design some of the badges and other things around the app as well. Okay, so how it works. So with uh, Firebase, it's a completely serverless experience, so when you want to talk to the database, you don't need to run, run for a router, it's you know, all done uh, through the way Firebase does it, which is great, but you want to maybe set up some rules. So for example, uh, the client wants to access the leaderboard, that's fine, you can read the leaderboard, but you don't want them to write the leaderboard, you don't want to put themselves right at the top, being the number one. So this is set up through rules in Firestore, which is very useful. So you can say, can write this, cannot, uh, can write this, can't write that. But for example, maybe you want to do something that doesn't involve a client action, such as a midnight job, or maybe when a user account is created. Uh, you can have events in Firestore. So uh, when Firestore triggers an event, like uh, you know, someone has done a quiz, it will go uh, cook up the new leaderboard on the basis of all the cue points, figure out who's at the top, and then write the new leaderboard into memory so that it can be read by all the clients. So another great example of this is the investment system. So you want to know how much did my investments pay out? And that would involve going to lots of other people's accounts, but we don't want you to access lots of other people's data, especially from the front end. So what we do is the midnight job, which has administrative privileges, will take your list of investments, go to all the other people on your behalf, calculate the e-score, calculate the cue point investment return, and then put that back into your return. So you get a little bit in your database slot saying how much I got, rather than accessing everybody's uh, data in turn. Okay, so I'm gonna hand it <coughs> to Rico to talk about how we built the app. Okay, next I, I'll talk a little bit about our development process. We think team spirit is important for team projects. Sometimes we went for lunch and Starbucks during uh, break time to create relationship and development, uh, develop teamwork. So I think our team has great spirit. And every morning and every end of the day, we are sharing our progress and next tasks. It's called daily things. And we, we kept uh, track of them on Notion. Because of this, we could work efficiently. And when we decide something, we discuss and decide using democracy, instead of tech leaders' power. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is our first rough sketch of us. It made so beautiful evolution like this. So next, I talk a little bit. Uh, I talk about our challenges. We use a new feature in React called React Hook, building a web building front end. We like that uh, we could use functional component instead of class component. But it, uh, it made state management and timing a little bit challenging. Another challenge we had was working with Materi UI and making sure that we had a, a good theme around the entire application. Um, and then also just general responsiveness. So we wanted to make sure that the app looked really good on the mobile and also the desktop version. So that was a really challenging thing we did, but we all learned a lot from it. Yeah, and finally, uh, Firebase is not Google Cloud. So uh, they were bought by Google Cloud a long time ago. And I've used Google Cloud in some of our projects at Code Chrysalis. Uh, such as cloud functions, but their implementation within Firebase is a lot more limited. You get the database triggers, but you lose access to some languages, and you have to use certain CLI toolings, tools, 
uh, it, it was a bit of a learning experience to learn specifically how Firebase wants you to do things. So it was a good, it was good, it was very interesting. Uh, in terms of future features, we all went around as a team and decided one more thing we would add to the app if we had the time to do so. Uh, and for myself, because we've basically built a fintech platform, kind of, <coughs> uh, I thought it'd be fun to add things like ETFs or options, so I could like bet that Vic would, Vic's e-score would go up in a week's time because uh, he studies so much and studies so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another feature that I wanted to implement was more types of quizzes. So I worked on mainly getting the quiz itself working, but I think it would be fun to have maybe some puzzle-based quizzes or having other types of interactive quizzes that you could work on as well. Um, I would like to work on some more interesting feedback for the user, more animations, and maybe some WebGL, 3JS that we can implement in the quiz component um, to make the experience a bit more exciting. So I love shopping, but now I can only buy badges in store. So I want to buy more goodies and increase funnels collecting queues points. For example, I want to buy accessories and add our avatar. Okay, so again, we are QLab and I'm Vic. I'm Derek. I'm Eriko. And I'm Fraser. Thank you so much for listening. This is a QR code that you can uh, follow the app, you can uh, go and try it out, please, please do. And you can find us on GitHub on, under these handles too. So thank you so much for coming today and listening to us. Thank you so much. So that's all the teams. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You won't have had, had the chance to ask questions, but if you do, please come and catch us at the networking session. We only had 10 minutes to talk to you about, so uh, there's so much more we wanted to say about our apps. There's so much. If you're, if you're interested in any of them at all, please come and talk to us afterwards. We'll be very happy to chat to you. Uh, and just before I hand back to Connie, uh, I think from all of us at CC10, we would like to give our heartiest thank you to the staff of CC10. Uh, for the passion and dedication that you guys have poured into the school over the past few years to really make this experience and this school uh, the wonderful, hacky, excellent, yeah, every day something new happens kind of experience that it was. So from all of us at CC10, thank you so much. あの、最後に話すんだけど、あの、方はいるかもしれませんが、2つあります。まずはスキルですね。え、このアプリをスクールために あえて育成をしてるって言ってます。で、皆さんは、え、え、いろいろ、あの、全然教えたことない。AWS も教えてないし、え、でも皆さんはそうやって自分でどんどんこう、え、ハードル エンジニアは行動書くだけじゃダメです。え、
、えー、非常に大事なんですねでユーザーの、えー、立場から、えー、その作ってるものを考えたりエンパシーを持ってこうそのあーユーザーが欲しいものをどうあ作るかで皆さんここ立ったあの方々みんなエンジニアですプログラムマネージャーとか UX、UI デザイナーとかじゃないんですねただしそういうロールをみんな分け合って今回アプリケーションを作ってるわけなんですだから、えー、ソフトうちの学校ではソフトスキルとは呼んだ一緒にして呼んじゃってますけどもそのハードスキル以外のソフトスキルの重要性って非常に大事です、えー、あそうですあと一つあのヤンさんにあの変わりますけども<笑>、えー今まで、えー、日本でにこれ10期第10期生です、えー、2年半やってますで日本人の生徒が3割ぐらいだったんですねで 30% しかいないでわざわざ、えー、日本に来てこれやりたかったのも日本,日本人 50% 外国人 50% 女性 50% っていうそういう目標があったんですけども、えー、今回近く,近くまで来ましたけど次回の CC11 は実は、えー、女性が 50% です、えー、もう非常に嬉しいニュースですね<笑>これはヤンさんとかも相当力入れてここまであのたまたまじゃないんですね結構あのエネルギーを使って、えー、こう行動して、まあ、こういう結果になったと思いますあとはもう一個嬉しいことは日本人 43% これも非常に<笑>まあ多分次の次が505050になるかなって僕は思ってますえー、っていうことで以上であのじゃあヤンさんに最後締めの言葉を英語でお願いしたいと思います Everybody, thank you so much for being here. It's,、um, it's always amazing. I think people in the front maybe you haven't seen, but it's like standing room only now.、Um, thank you so much for, for coming here. I know it's the holidays, so thank you for spending、um, Christmas with Code Chrysalis Christmas. <laughs> There's a pun somewhere in there.、Um, <laughs> uh, thank you all.、Uh, this is our 10th cohort.、Uh, Number 10, and I think each time it just gets like, I don't know,、uh, sadder, <laughs> is, but like bittersweet. It, it's never easy, I think, parting with each class, no matter how many times we've, we've done this.、Um, it's, it's always amazing seeing them go from learning about objects and arrays and struggling with looping through nested objects to doing. This stuff today.、Um, and it's an incredible journey that we've seen them go through.、Um, I want to say so, in previous classes,、uh, we've actually had quite a few experienced students. So, people with computer science degrees, or who had been coding for a long time, or have been working as software developers.、Um, this class. Is our least experienced.、Um, it's the most inexperienced class that we have ever had. <laughs> and, and, yet, and yet, they are our most accomplished.、Um, so it's incredible how much teamwork and a positive mindset, how far it can take you.、Um, I think a little under 40% of our Uh, CC10 students took Introduction to Programming, our foundations class,、uh, which is amazing to think that only six months ago, only a few months ago, they didn't know the difference between Java and JavaScript.、Um, I remember one of you came in and asked me, and, and asked me, like, yeah, you guys do Java, right? Yeah, it's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and、uh, it's been quite a journey these past two and a half years with Connie, with the incredible staff that we have.、Um, I, I think our, our biggest issue with staff is that they're just so damn passionate 
<laughs> um, and I, I love that about them. They work their butts off every day. Um, all of our conversations are about what is best for the students, how can we make this experience even better. Um, and, and it's just so heartwarming to come into an environment every day and have that be the topic of conversation. Um, and so for that, I am forever grateful for our wonderful staff. Um, as Connie said, our next class is 50% women. <laughs> that took us two and a half years to do. Um, that was not just us. Uh, we thank all the uh, different companies, all the different people that have helped us get there. Um, from encouraging spouses, girlfriends, friends, co-workers uh, to check, check us out, check out programming, to sponsoring events, providing pizza, to providing scholarships. Um, each and every uh, piece of effort uh, has helped us reach this 50% in the next class and we really hope that we're able to sustain that um, going forward. It is what we need. Um, as we make software for the entire world. Um, so uh, I want to be done talking. Next slide. Da, 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 da. <laughs> da, da, da. Uh, there we go. Uh, I want to invite all of you to the next demo day. Please mark your calendars. March 26th, three months from now. Um, we have some CC11 students in the audience. If you guys can raise your hands. Woo, -woo yes, yes, yeah, higher. Uh, they're shy, okay, it's okay. Uh, as you notice, you might have noticed, each and every one of our students came up to speak today. Um, we want everyone to be able to not just create the software, but be proud of the work that they do and to be able to present it and talk about it and share that knowledge. So at no time is anyone on the team sitting down and watching someone else present. Um, so yeah, please mark your calendars. Um, if, you, if you are interested um, in Code Christmas, if you have any questions about our programs, etc., um, some people from our team will be all the way in the back in the foundations classroom um, answering any questions that you might have. So if you have anything program specific, please, please go to the back. Um, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being here. Um, oh, there's one more thing. Connie, did I forget something? Oh, okay. Connie, come on. あ、実は来年の5月8日メフォート。あ、日本で初めて購読サービスがこの日本語版今シブの日本語版を始めます。これでもっと日本人に同じような経験をしてエンジニアになる道を歩んでいただければと思って始めましたんで え、ぜひ皆さんちょっと、あ、他の方にも、え、ぜひ、あの、教えてあげてください。で、ファウンデーションはもうすでに日本語始めました。3回やりましたんで、来年、え、1月からまた4回目をやります。よろしくお願いします
Okay, I don't know who's taking it. Are they taking Is anyone missing their phone? Please pick up. 